Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Detola, and I'd like to spend a minute today sharing with you about one of my favorite new products. These are the PrepSure guides from Contact Easy. Now, with almost 20 years in the dental laboratory industry, I can tell you that the number one issue faced by dental laboratories is inadequate occlusal reduction. And this is a bad habit a lot of dentists get into, including myself in the old days where I would just take a mirror, move the cheek back, close one eye, and kind of guess at how much reduction that I had done. And this just isn't cutting it in a digital age anymore when laboratories are able to make two little clicks on the opposing tooth and the prep tooth and see exactly how much we've reduced down to a hundredth of a millimeter. Prep and pray is no longer going to work. I love to use a depth cut based preparation technique, but that only works when I'm prepping a crown for the first time. And statistics show that almost 60% of the crowns we do are replacing an old crown with a new crown and you can't use depth cuts anymore. And that's where we have the need for a simple, easy to use predictable instrument like the PrepSure. They come in three common occlusal reduction measurements, one millimeter, 1.5 and two millimeters. And it's a simple and straightforward way to ensure that you've reduced the minimum material thickness for whatever crown you're prescribing. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the PrepSure guides. So here are the PrepSure guides. They come in an assortment of three. We have the one millimeter tip thickness, and this can be used for solid zirconia crowns, or this is the minimum material thickness for lithium disilicate. We have the 1.5 millimeter thickness prep shirt. Um, you can also do, this is an ideal thickness for lithium disilicate. You can certainly do solid zirconia at this thickness. So you can maybe do some PFMs with that, but I prefer two millimeters if I'm going to be doing a PFM, for example, a PFM bridge, or if I'm doing porcelain fused to zirconia, or maybe an anterior tooth where I wanna do two millimeters of incised ledge reduction so we can get a really nice aesthetic looking uh, restoration, then I'll use the two millimeters there as well. So you can see, for example, it says prep sure and then 2.0 millimeters. And you can see the indication for the distal end of the instrument and the mesial. And so they are slightly different. You can see there's a longer reach on the distal and it kind of has that back action hook that you'll see in use in just a second. So let's take a look at a case that I grabbed and take a look and see how much reduction we actually have on this crown preparation that you can see on that first molar. So we'll have the patient bite together, and this is one of the nice things uh, about using the PrepSure guides is that you simply have the patient bite together. There's nothing in between their teeth, so it's easy for you to verify that they are in fact in maximum intercuspation. And it's great that we're actually able to uh, do this with them closed rather than like put the instrument and have them bite together that's a little more dicey and a little harder to kind of measure. So we take the mesial end, it's got the M right here, and we take the mesial end and we set it on the mesial buccal cusp, and then we just slide the instrument up and try to slide it into the central groove, and you can see how it just goes right over like that. It slides up and over the mesial buccal cusp, and then we can continue to try to push it to the lingual, and I can feel it go right off that lingual cusp and into like where the patient's tongue would be basically. So anytime you get to like the, the crook, the angle on that, you're like three or four millimeters out to the lingual. So it's a very short trip from the central groove up and over the lingual cusp. And you'll feel it pretty quickly if you're hitting a road bump and not able to get over that. Then we can take the instrument and flip it over. So we now have the distal end and we're gonna send, set the distal end on the distal buckle cusp tip and then go up and over into the central groove. And there we are and then continue to move it, and it slides right off um, the lingual side of the tooth because we have more than a millimeter of reduction there as well. So let me turn that around and see if we can see what that looks like from the lingual. This is a perspective we never really get in dentistry, but this is how the lab gets to see things. And so you can see the instrument in the central groove, and then we're gonna slip it up and over that lingual cusp. And so it's now kind of dangling out in space like that. So. And by the way, this, this view that the lab gets, if we could only see this on patients, we would be able to eliminate most of the under reduction we have on crown preps because the lingual cusps, whether it's on the upper teeth or the lower teeth are responsible for 95% of the under reduction that we see on crown preps. It's never the buccal cusp. Those are the easy ones to see and they're far less problematic than the lingual cusps. So let's try the 1.5 millimeter uh, prep sure guidance. See if we happen to have 1.5 millimeters here. So I'll take the mesial portion, set on the mesial buccal cusp tip, slide up and over, and it goes right into the central groove. And then as I try to go farther to the lingual, I'm bumping into that lingual cusp. 
So we have less than 1.5 millimeters of reduction on the lingual cusp, and we have a little more than 1.5 on the buccal cusp, and then I'll flip it around to the distal end, and I'll set the tip on the distal buccal cusp tip. And as I go to try to slide over here into the central groove, I'm banging into the opposing tooth and I can't get in there. So on this distal buccal cusp, we might have 1.3 or 1.4. Usually you'll be able to click through there. So I'm probably at 1.2 or 1.3 here, even though I did have 1.5 when I measured it on the mesial cusp. And this is typically what you'll see is that you'll have different reduction on each of the cusp. What we're trying to do is make sure that whichever cusp is the most minimally reduced, it meets the minimum material thickness for whatever material we wanna use. So since the one millimeter prepture uh, was clear on all four of the cusps, if we're doing a solid zirconia crown, or even lithium disilicate, we're plenty thick um, for both of those crowns. So as you can see, the prepture guides are the most simple and straightforward way that I've found to be able to measure reduction. You simply have the patient bite together, and then if you're gonna do solid zirconia, you can use the one millimeter. If you want a stronger um, lithium disilicate crown, for example, you would take the 1.5 and go, okay, we're, we're good on the mesial. And then you would go and check on the distal buccal cusp tip and see you didn't have it. So you'd have the patient open, you do some more reduction, have them bite together and check it again. So the prep sure guides are the most simple, straightforward and accurate way that I've found to do it. I'd love to see all labs in the US, you know, buy a set of these and send it to their doctors who have high remakes uh, because of inadequate occlusal reduction. And they're really beneficial, even though I love using a depth cut based prep technique. These are wonderful when you're taking off an old crown and prepping a new one since you've lost all your reference points. So uh, the prep sure guides can be used on 100% of crown preps to make sure that you've given your laboratory adequate occlusal reduction. Well, I hope that was enough to convince you that prep sure is a better way to do it than prep and pray. So on behalf of myself and everyone here at Contact Easy, I wanna thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry.